Eve Bright Taylor has the reputation of being a woman never to wait for opportunities in business or her personal life. She is known as a big picture thinking, calculated, risk taking executive. She is known for creating opportunities rather than waiting for them. This philosophy has allowed her to navigate her successful career in one of the most male dominated industries in the world, professional sports. And she did it without compromising her personal style or femininity. Ms. Taylor had not reached the age of 35 when earning the top position as Vice President of the Miami Heat. In her position at the Miami Heat and the American Airlines Arena, Ms. Taylor advises on a wide variety of legal issues pertaining to marketing and promotions, concerts and events, corporate sales, merchandise initiatives, and player-related matters. Her track record of success ranges from the corporate law firm setting to the Ladies Professional Golf Association, LPGA, and the member team of the National Basketball Association. Like many of the sisters in the STEPS program, Ms. Taylor was diagnosed pre-diabetic. And like the sisters in the STEPS program, Ms. Taylor made the choice to change her health outcomes. Her step to improve her health was in the form of competitive bodybuilding. Like the sisters in the STEPS program, Ms. Taylor chose to become her own health advocate. And like the sisters in the STEPS program, Ms. Taylor chose fitness as a means to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Ms. Taylor is empowering women to become their own advocates, personally and professionally, for prevention and success. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Eve Wright Taylor, a sister with a purpose, taking steps to change outcomes on and off the court. Hang with me. How many people 
are passionate about their family and church. It's interactive, y'all. Thank you, thank you. What about traveling and fashion? I know I like it. That's what you mean. Hello. What about career and making money? Hello. All right. So would you say that you have the life you want if you possess all those things and experiences? Yeah, you have the life. So enjoying those things and experiences would have require you to be alive. Like, as in your heart to be, you know? Okay, so call me crazy, but I think that regardless of what our different interests are, each of us is passionate about staying alive. And I'm not talking about that pre hair piece, tight leader suit wearing John Travolta's not staying alive. I'm talking, oh honey, I'm talking about that it's too much fun to be had, to be dead, because I'm not paying attention to my heart. Okay, so let's visit, revisit what we know we want. We want Halle Berry Fire, right? yes. Oprah's Empire, yes. and our hearts to continue to work. Yes. All right. So you heard a little bit about me when we got started. But what you didn't hear is that I actually have a heart condition called mitral valve prolapse. And it's one in which my valves, I have, and one, the valves in one of my chambers don't completely close when my heart beats. Some people may have it. It's a pretty common condition. It's not life threatening. But I also have to, it's something I've got to pay attention to so that it does not become life threatening. And similar to heart disease, I know that I have to commit to a healthier lifestyle to lower my risk of having serious issues behind it. So showing our hearts of love, showing my heart to love, means working out anyway. Bottom line. So, one of my strongest beliefs has to do with kind of mind-body connection, but I didn't get there overnight. I take this first step if I come to events like this one, but then my follow-through was sketchy. <laughs> At best. Okay, that's putting it nicely. Though logically, I realized the importance of getting to the right body. I was very by the bill of health. Actually, doing it was a different matter. A lot of that involved for me. Excuses. I didn't have time with my work, family, church, sorority, endless list of things. I don't know, I didn't know where to start or what to do to try to change my health and my body. And then I said, fitness people just aren't intelligent. They ain't smart. These put these folks in the gym, and they talk about This is ridiculous. And then I said, I just can't afford it. I can afford everything else, but I can't afford this in my budget. The fact of the matter is that we most likely shortchange on realizing our personal best by not taking care of ourselves physically and mentally. And I say that as someone who, for a time, was guilty of shortchanging my physical health in terms of my own success. Like I was moving on a career, but I was lagging on the rest of it. So, you know about my heart condition, but my real come to Jesus health situation didn't start there. It started by me being overweight from my frame, developing a cholesterol issue, and looking squarely down the barrel of a strong family history of diabetes. Even when I faced those critical issues, I made excuses about my lifestyle, my work ethic, I was working too many hours, my attitude to my job. Prior to working in professional basketball, I worked in professional golf, and especially at tournaments and work events, related meetings, you know, conferences, whatever, board meetings. I was so grounded by delicious, high calorie and fatty food. And instead of taking the responsibility of actively working out and saying, no, I can't have it, not today, maybe tomorrow. I simply made excuses for all the weight I was getting. The excuses ran the gamut from like socializing as a part of my child to Midwesterners just have a different perception of what a healthy weight is. <laughs> I'm from the Midwest originally, I'm from Indiana, and for the longest time, I swore that meat, potatoes, and macaroni and cheese were basic food groups necessary for Y'all may think the same thing. Okay, so back to my excuses. I went so far as to even say that I would have a fabulous body if I had my own personal trainer like the celebrities and all the time in the world working. But eventually, however, even I reached that pivotal point in my life where I had to stop making excuses 
and realized that my poor health was affecting my mental health. Was affecting me from being able to reach what my full potential was. Now I'm not saying I'm negative, but certainly it slowed me down on from that track. And so I had to commit to doing something about it. Like I said, one of my strongest passions is the belief that I must take care of my that you have to take care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. My own will and determination to live a healthier life style originally stemmed from my desire to avoid taking medication or having to experience the health challenges others were having around me. Strong family history, diabetes, everybody has it, both sides. So absolutely, I absolutely did not want to live the rest of my life popping pills to deal with the bad choices I made concerning food and fitness. Just didn't make sense. And instead, I devoted myself to making better choices to turn my life around and my life around. And I did it in a big way. Not only did I reverse my crash course with diabetes and high cholesterol, I competed in physique and bodybuilding competitions when I was confronted with, even when confronted with consistent physical challenges, heart condition, right? Got to wear a heart rate monitor, I'm slower than everybody else, but you know, you keep pushing, you just work around, you move over those kind of obstacles. So yes, I was actually on stage in a bikini, competed. Now, I didn't win, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take home the truck out, I made it look back. Those chicks in the over, they were fierce. I was like, ooh, I got to be working. But, I did it. I did it. And as with everything in my life, my own journey has been an evolution and involved a mental reboot of sorts to overcome my persistent excuse making. So that's my story. It starts with a personal commitment to improve my health and strategies to get there. What's yours? You've been the first chapter by showing up today. The next one will be about what you do tomorrow. You know that you have to initiate change to take care of yourself, your health, and your heart. The question you have to answer is whether you'll pull up your big girl pants and find a way to do it. In my book, I discuss in detail the real life strategies I use to keep my health a priority. And this is from someone who has a pretty demanding career, a family, a 16 month old, a small business, and juggling a billion hats we as women. Wait, did you know, no disrespect to my husband or the men in the room, but y'all know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> we talked about a couple of them here, but we don't have time to cover them all. You spend time sewing into other people and their problems. Take some time to sow seeds in yourself. If you're serious about goal, about your goal, having the life you want, clean bill of health, overs and pie. Come see me about getting your copy of Life with Speed of Passion to help you put the action steps in place to help you achieve it. Amazing people, I'm sorry, amazing lives, people live, don't just happen. People accomplish amazing things because they are committed to their personal development and their well-being. And I know you're committed to yours. Thank you for having me and allowing me to share my journey with you. Yes, ma'am. How much weight did you have to lose? Well, <laughs> I, think, I think I lost about 20 pounds overall, but I will tell you it was, and I have a picture on my phone if you want to see it, because sometimes I can't believe myself. Um, but it was, I was losing the fat, but what muscle does weigh more, so it was, it only ends up, I think it's about 20 pounds off. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. So right now you're not on any of the medications that they had actually. I am not. So it started with I told you, you know, I was making problems a few weeks ago, and then I was getting it. I was like, yeah, you know, it's not too bad. It's not terrible. And that's technically what they would return to. So when I went in for my physical, um, my doctor said your cholesterol is too root. I'm gonna put you on some cholesterol medicine. And, oh, by the way, your glucose is borderline. <laughs> Here with the strong family history, I think we should jump in front of it and start giving them medicine. And I just, I said, 
no, I, I just don't want to do that. Like my mom said, that, that literally everybody in my family, I bet. Now not everybody's on the insulin, and there's some heart problems, but I just said, let me let me work on it. Let me work on it. And so I committed to that point. Like I ate oatmeal every day. She's like, okay, come see me in a month. No, two months. Come see me in two months. And I told her I was going to work on something. And so I ate oatmeal every day, which rocked my cholesterol, I will tell you. Like a rock. I was back to normal levels by the time she tested it again. And then I, I just found somebody I could work out with. Now, I had to figure it out in my budget. And I was like, I went to the trainer who was friends or friend or friend. I was like, I can't afford it. He was like, Let's do this. There are other people I know that are trying to do something. We'll group you together, which then make it affordable, you know? And so we started off working as a group, and it was that sort of thing. Now, that is kicking me in the body building. Like, this was an evolution over the years. Well, kicking me in the body building was my A-type personality, because I had been working out like crazy. My body didn't look like those chicks on the magazines. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> so I said, I want the results. I know I'm working hard. I know I'm getting healthier. I want to see the results. And um, I started doing some research, talking to people, a bodybuilder, and said, the only way you're going to get there is if you compete. I mean, you get on stage in bikini. And girl, I got to tell you about that, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but instead, and I'm fearful, right, on a few different levels, but instead of using that fear to say, I, I don't know if I can do it, I'm not going to do it. Spin it. And that's one of the things I talk about in my book. I put myself in front of it. So my fear of humiliation propelled me to get right rather than it kept me from doing it as an obstacle. So that was a long way to get to your question. <laughs> What's it like being a sports executive? Ah, exciting. Um, but it's work. I mean, like every other business, we're a business. It's risk management, it's people, it's all of those things contracts, facilities, but uh, our widget is pretty exciting. And so, particularly at this time of year, it is all or nothing for everybody who are focused on the goal and, and to be winning it is, it is thrilling and it's exhilarating. And I will tell you, when I joined the organization, they just won in 2006. I didn't get a ring in it. The following year, we won 15 games in the entire season. <laughs> so it's, it's a single food business, so we do appreciate having been on the low end, it's what it's like. Yes, ma'am. And you have a daughter. I do. So what are your tips going to be for your daughter? Oh my goodness, if I knew, when my 20, now I'm just 29. <laughs> 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 I know, but I'm early 20s. <laughs> 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 like, oh my goodness. No, it, it will absolutely be um, taking care of her health, whatever that health looks like for her. Um, you know, my mom was good about making sure we were involved in team sports and activities, but again, in the end, like, <coughs> need to say some macaroni cheese. So, um, so I, I do want to have her grow up with knowing what it means to enjoy food and those sorts of things, but also be mindful of what that means in the whole scheme about her health long term. So for all of um, us women here that juggle everything that we have to juggle, mm -hmm. how do you make that first step in saying, I'm going to carve out this time for me? Mm -hmm. So, infants changed my life. I didn't believe in people originally. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, the first thing I think is, is crucial to your success is support. So one, I think you gotta start talking to people about what you want to do. That's not only about your physical health, but what you were trying to achieve overall. It holds you accountable, it gets you with like-minded folks. Because you need people to support you when you just don't feel like doing it. And that happens to us all, even me today. And um, two, to maybe partner, come up with strategies, buddy systems. I mean, even today, my mother, I have friends that you know, are in this body kind of building community that I keep tabs with and they keep tabs on me. But even my mother's just like, I want to get along with you today, so can you please like go work out? <laughs> <laughs> or you can't live on uh, power bars alone, or you can't live on this alone. I really need you to kind of be just because there are times of the year for all of us, times where things just get crazy and what you need it to do kind of seems to fall behind what everybody else needs. Mm -hmm. But I think Having that support system as that number one step, 
keeps us accountable, one, but two, they keep you grounded in that you can't do for those other people if you're not doing for you. What can you contribute to them if you're in the hospital and you put a heart condition? No. So it's not selfish to take care of you first. It's smart to take care of you first. So you can better be a support to that. Yes, sir. Very nice, thank you. Uh, you mentioned interest in mind-body. Mm -hmm. Besides exercise, do you have any other practices you use for stress management yourself? Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, my mom said, um, it's not too much all the time, like food and sleep are essential for me. So, and I don't get a lot of those these days. <laughs> so, uh, one tip I did, music is very powerful. I was at Shelly at, at this, our table was talking about how she uses ringtones. Music is very powerful for me, and I have many playlists for my mood. It changes my mood. Uh, if I am tired to just kind of push you over that edge and keep you motivated. I need to use it quite a bit um, as, as one of my means of stress release. Uh, I always love the spa, uh, but I don't always get there. So, <laughs> so I have to use other means in terms of physical, emotional, and uh, ground learning. And then, you know, recently I started in addition to prayer, kind of, I need a moment to meditate. And I don't know what I'm doing with meditating, but all I know is I need a moment to clear my mind <laughs> so I can be right for the world and ready for the world. And that seems to calm me down and even me out so that I can be able to perform um, at the best level I can. Mm -hmm. Do you have some suggestions based on your experience for an older adult, uh, say, 50 and old, so let's just say a 65-year-old. A 65-year-old who's never exercised before in her life. And so she's got all these fears about, I'm not going to be, I'm going to feel uncomfortable in this place, and I don't, I'm mostly, mostly fear-based. How do you, what's your advice to that 65-year-old who wants to hear you and do what you're asking them to do, but there's a lot of options? To, I've, never done this. I've actually had this conversation with my mother when I started this thing, because like I said, she's got that and some other things. And um, she actually got more excited as she saw me progress and ended up in the gym. And it's, look, it's intimidating. You see all these little chickadees running around, people with short zones, <laughs> all these sorts of things, and you don't know how the equipment works. I, I say, the first step is to find, there are lots of these like silver steps silver fitness programs that I would say start getting involved in because those are folks who are your peer group who are doing the same thing. That's the first thing. Two, who cares what they're doing? We're focused on you. And this is about your health. I wouldn't let anybody else, we don't let other folks determine how we do anything else, so why would we let that determine how we take care of ourselves? That's the second thing. And then the third thing I'd say is don't be afraid of weight training. I know we all think that we are going to bulk up and look like those big ripply muscle fans or whatever. That is not the case. <laughs> I love that too. I'm like, I don't want to be like that. But the more weight I lifted, and of course, safely, it's progress and those sorts of things, the better I felt, but the better my body looked, and the more I could eat too. Because <laughs> you eat more, you got to feed yourself to, to be able to do that. And so I was eating more, and I was lifting more, and I was shrinking down. Like I said, So I think when you start putting out examples like that, start getting that support peer group, and then um, I, I think it is important at least early on to kind of get some serious instruction about how to go about, you know, a safe program that they can get involved at any age. Yes, ma'am. Just to add on to what you said, um, recently the Centers for Medicare Services expanded the criteria for. So what I tend to do for my patients is, especially those who have heart conditions, is look to see if they have that diagnosis. If they have that diagnosis, I send them straight to cardiac rehab. Two reasons, they're exercising, and number two, they do it in a safe environment where they are monitored. And then from cardiac rehab, they then graduate to programs like the silver speakers and the wireless. So if you do have a heart condition like a heart number three, talk to your physician about sending you to cardiac rehab. Yeah. And when I found out about my condition, you know, I talked to them and she said, look, it's not, other people have it, I'm sure you're familiar with it, just, you 
you have to pay attention to it, don't go above this heart rate. So I wear a heart rate monitor, and when I get that heart rate, I stop, and then I start over once I get down to the other safe space. So, and it's work. It takes me a little longer, but it works. Anyone else? All right. Y'all have been a fabulous audience. Thank you for letting me share.